Exactly. Um, and now it's time, without further ado, for Producers Picks. And now, the feature so many of our listeners wait for each day. Producers Picks. This is the time in the show where Jared Diglio goes over all of his favorite stories of the week. Uh, Jared, take it away. All right. So, uh, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, we don't necessarily talk about her a lot, but um, she's the, quote, QAnon Congress person. Yes, she's a little out there. Um, yes, from Georgia. She's almost like AOC. She she gets a lot of media publicity. Yes. I don't know how effective it is for her, uh, but a lot of people know her name. Yes, well, she uh, has challenged AOC, in fact, to oh. a debate on the economics of the Green New Deal. Ugh. At AOC, I'd like to challenge you to a debate on the Green New Deal economic policy. Since you sponsored the Green New Deal and have a degree in economics, I'm sure you'd agree you are more than qualified. I just have a business a degree in business admin and have owned a construction company for 20 years. The debate between AOC and I on the Green New Deal economic policy would be informative for the American people. They deserve to hear two sides with the pros and cons. Um... Maybe unpopular opinion here, but uh, and I'm not the I'm not the person who thought of this. Um, I, I saw somebody else say this a while back, but I just I don't think that constantly giving so much attention to AOC helps anyone. I think it's a quick way for Republicans to grandstand and get likes on Twitter and talk a big game. But I really don't care. I, I, AOC is not our biggest issue right now. I like what Jim J- Jordan did yesterday because Dr. Fauci is damaging the country right now, whether you like him or not, more than AOC. His words, his psychosis, his his pandemic porn is really, really hurting the vaccination movement and the reopenings. So I don't mind Jim Jordan going back and forth with Dr. Fauci. I enjoyed that. I think that actually serves a purpose. I think getting that video out there really shows Americans what this guy is about. But as far as Marjorie Taylor Greene and AOC having a debate, mm, I'll skip that. Well, AOC has yet to respond. I'm sure her schedule is busy calling out President Joe Biden and not talking about concentration camps on the border. But that tweet bore unexpected fruit from Representative President Eric Swalwell. Oh, President Swalwell. President Swalwell tweeted at Marjorie Taylor Greene, when you aren't on any committees, you can propose stunts like this. Well, Marjorie Taylor Greene had a response. Well, we all know how you serve on the Intel Judiciary and Homeland Security committees with your pants around your ankles, giving it to China. I serve on the committee of the whole and hold all of the Congress accountable by demanding recorded votes so the people know our record. You know what? I'm such a phony. I am such a fraud because there I go saying, you know, it's just this back and forth. I don't really go for it. And then she does something like that and it suits my fancy. And I'm like, go girl. Yikes. Speaking of Swalwell, I want to read you uh, these really quick, Jared. We're talking a lot about the fake story about the Russian bounties on American troops. Um, the media and the Democrats, but I repeat myself, they really harped on this, that Trump wasn't bringing this up to Putin or Clutin or whatever you want to call him, and that he was letting it slide because, of course, you connect the dots, all roads lead to Russia. And um, Representative Eric Swalwell said this in September. Now I get why at real Donald Trump won't stand up to Putin for bounties on our troops. I just want to interject here. It's because it's not true. It's because it's fake news. But this is Representative Eric Swalwell. He's not just president. He's also a detective, and he figures things out. Couldn't figure out the case. Could not figure out the case of the Chinese spy who was getting very cozy with him. But he figures out other things, Jared. Now I get why Donald Trump won't stand up to Putin for bounties on our troops. Does Trump act as a Russian agent? Yes. But also, Trump thinks any U.S. troops killed by Russia bounties are suckers or losers. He hasn't defended them. He never will. He just incorporated, he just seamed together two fake news stories, okay? Do not underestimate the, the sheer dopiness of Eric Swalwell. He is a dope among dopes, my friends. 
All right, communism in the news. Raul Castro, who succeeded his brother Fidel as the Communist Party of Cuba's first secretary in 2011, is expected to step down from his post as the country begins its eighth Communist Party Congress today. So for the first time in more than 60 years, Cuba will have a government without a Castro. Wow. I don't know if it's going to be better or worse, because who knows, but historically. So good news is this year, no more Kennedys, no more Castros. Yeah, that is So the old lines are, uh, you know, that old old blood feud is, uh, is gone now. That, that is good news. That's, you know, you're an, an on a Friday nonetheless. Absolutely. Com- Feeling good. CCP Friday, baby. Let's go. Um, so uh, the Alexei Navalny stuff, he was the uh, Russian that was supposedly poisoned by Putin because he was the opposition leader and he, he did a video at Putin's supposed palace and things like that. Well, anyway, he's been arrested and he's gone on a hunger strike, but he actually is now detailing that when he's in prison... They are force feeding him in a straitjacket so he cannot go on a hunger strike. Ooh. It's it's so bizarre. I don't know why they want to keep him alive. I don't know what but it seems like I and I he said, you know, obviously there are prison laws, they can't do this, but it's Russia it's Russia. Come on. Yeah, there's a lot of news today about Russia and Putin and you know, all of this stuff. It's it's pretty wacky. Just add that to the list. So this is an interesting story. This is from the New York Post. A man accidentally gets one dose of Moderna and one Pfizer COVID vaccine. So he went in for his first shot and he got the Moderna and then he came back and he got the Pfizer. What happens with that? We really don't know. He may be patient zero of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He may become a superhero, may become a super villain. We, uh, we honestly don't. He may spontaneously combust. I mean, anything is possible. But it is interesting. He, you know, he seems to be okay now. So okay. he's, well, that's, he's, he's that... a New Hampshire man, so let's just monitor that closely, you know. But How did that happen? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But this, this, could be, uh, this could be a breakthrough. Maybe he'll be super immune. We'll have super immunity. Yeah, maybe it will work better. Maybe the mix and match. Yeah. Do That's have... scary, though. I hope he's okay on a uh, serious note. Pr- yeah, everything seems fine right now. There haven't been any side effects that uh, that we know of. Imagine being the person who put that, who injected him and then realized it was the wrong one. You're like, all right, so you're all, oh, um, all right, this is awkward. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have had the launch button next to the cancel button. <laughs> On this day, of course, it happens every year, but April 16th, 2000, Tom Brady is selected in the sixth round, 199th pick by the New England Patriots. Wow. Tom tweeted today, big day, my NFL career can legally buy a beer. Aw. Tom Brady, 10-time Super Bowl, 10 Super Bowl appearances, seven-time Super Bowl champion. The greatest of all time. goat. And from one goat to another, it's... Again, it's ironic. The same day Tom Brady is drafted, the birthday of Patriots head coach Bill Belichick. Coach Belichick turned 69 years old today. Nice. Rob Rob Gronkowski could not yet be reached for comment, but I'm pretty sure it'll be nice. Yeah, it's going to be a good Friday for all of them. Um, Happy birthday, Bill. Hope it's a good one. Jared, I'm surprised you didn't put in the story about the the dad with the bobcat. Uh, The dad with the bobcat, that's more a visual story. Because the, the video is good. So, Jared, no one can set a scene like you, though. <laughs> There's this crazy video of a dad and our husband and wife, and they're outside in the driveway, and a bobcat attacks the mom. Uh, this is confusing. I'm using all different words, mom, wife, whatever. But it attacks the lady. And the, the guy, I think he pulls out his equalizer. He did pull out the heater, yeah. But I have to say, I know people love cats, okay? I hosted with Dr. Matt the other day. And I know it's a bobcat. I know it's not like a house cat, but oh my god, scary! When they want, when they cling on like that, it is. The woman started to scream, and she would. She screamed like I would scream. She was so freaked out, and they and the dad took the cat and just chucked it onto the yard. Really crazy video. You guys should check it out. Um, when we get back on the other side, we'll be talking to Howard Lawrence Carr. Do not go anywhere on this 
beautiful Friday. This is The Grace Curley Show. You're listening to The Grace Curley Show. This hour.